Okay, so let's get this thing focused here. Um, it's 526, this is video 101, and I'm doing uh, assignment 38 for you. Uh, you're expected to be able to do these problems or, and communicate with me if you can. I really don't see any reason why your average uh, high school freshman couldn't do them. Um, it's easy to make a mistake, admittedly, but um, you're required to do this kind of math. So we look at number one, let's put the number here and there's number two, and you're asked to find the shaded area. Old hat stuff for a class like, a classes like you guys. And I set it up where I'm taking the big and I'm subtracting the small, and I'm remembering to take the opposites when I open up uh, the, the square of the, um, of the second term. I'm just taking the opposites. So let's just write it out, let's take a look at it here. Uh, what we have, and there we go, it's like cross phi here. There's the f squared, there's the l squared, there's four times three times two. And the second guy, you might see the parentheses there that I'm subtracting. There's the f squared, there's the l squared, and there's two times, uh, five times two, so there's your 20x. Um, notice I put everything in standard form when I did that second step there. Okay, everything's in standard form, and uh, then I just put my life terms together, and hopefully I came up with the right answer over there. Okay, and then the second one is just worded in a different way. Subtract this from this, you're expected to do that in high school. Again, the same skills that we uh, learned already, I'm moving it over a little, and I will, may, I will show you the whole thing here. Uh, before I move on to the last two problems. And again, I'm doing the same thing. Uh, there's 9x squared, there's 25. You can follow me left to right. 3 times 5 times 2 is 30x. There's the 6x squared, there's the 4 squared, and here we go, 6 times 4 times 2. Negative on the second one, positive on the first one. Put it into standard form. Okay. And... Um, then um, put together the like terms, and I came up with this answer over here. You can double check me and communicate with me, but these should all be correct. Okay, so that was one and two, and as far as I'm concerned, you're expected to be able to do these. Um, or at a minimum, communicate with me if they're too difficult for you, but again, I find that hard to believe. Um, so there we go, um, taking care of perfect square trinomials. Uh, still doing multiplication, but that will change where we're going to do um, factoring in the next lecture. We're going to start that topic. But there you go. Um, everything written out for you so you can check it. And uh, now we go on to the next uh, bit of information that we need to do. I'll move this over here. And, and in this case, uh, we're giving a... Uh, what we're told is a perfect square trinomial with one variable, okay? And there we go, we have it written out, just like we saw when we did those multiple choice problems. So in my head, I imagine that this represents the area of a square, okay? So since the sides of a square must be the same by definition, we're just using a greater abstraction now in, um, in the high school to be able to figure out uh, what the um, what the uh, sides are and once we know one side we know the perimeter so let's just move this over just a little bit here so when I look at it as you've been taught already I take the square root of 9x squared which is 3x and I take the square root of the last term here which is 4 and then I look at the middle term 3 times 4 times 2 is 24. I did it. And you'd be expected to do stuff like that. You'll be asked to do more difficult things than this uh, down the road. So there you go. Have it written out for you there. Okay? And once I know one side, I know them all. So I just sort of snuck it in there so you can see it. And the perimeter would be 4, since there are 4 sides, times this. And that would be 12x minus 16p. And you'd be expected to do that. And really, um, I don't think it's all that difficult. Uh, and we have talked a lot about square roots already. So here's the area. Here it is factored. 
here's a physical representation, and there's the perimeter, a map that you've done in eighth grade. Okay, so I go on to the second one. That's only different. So there's three. Uh, that's only different because it has two variables, but they're, they're no strangers to us. So I write this guy out. Okay. And uh, again, right away I should notice that it's minus 4c squared. And here I'm writing out the first two terms here. I'll move it over so you can figure it out on your own. So c times c equals c squared. That is the square root of c squared is c. Um, second term there, square root of 4d squared is uh, 2d. Notice I left a little blank in there. Oh yeah, it works. A 1 times 2 times 2 is 4, as long as the middle term is negative. And there you go. I draw my little square here, and one of the sides is c minus 2d, two variables. So that means the perimeter is this, and you'll be doing this, like I just mentioned, uh, in more complicated forms for rectangles part of your math. So there's 4c and there's minus 8d. And there you go. Um, your homework done for you in only six minutes. And again, I'll expect communication from you if uh, this isn't making sense to you. But I have a feeling it does. And so, again, that takes care of our perfect square trinomial section. I'm going to move on to factoring, as I mentioned before. And again, I'll just get this all out so you see what I'm doing here. Um, okay, and like I said, um, we're going to be moving on to uh, factoring with a monomial and then division. Okay, so we'll leave this off.